Good morning. My name is Greg Davis. I'm with CVS ArcSafe. I'd like to welcome you today to our presentation on the remote racking and remote switching options we have that are single-use tools for the Eaton Cutler Hammer Magnum DS, SB, and MWI series of insulated case circuit breakers. We have two remote racking systems we're going to show you today. One is our brand new MDSR1 and the other is our legacy RS3. Then we're going to go through our remote switching, which is the RSK uh, MDS30. And then we're also going to look at the RSA48. Let's start out first with our MDSR1. And I'm just going to pull it out from underneath the table here. You can tell that it comes in a Pelican case here. You'll get a set of operating instructions with it. If you've used our DSR-1 at all, it'll look very familiar in terms of the on-off control switch, the charging. You've got your racking head motor right here. And with the racking head, you're going to notice we've got the 3 8 inch square drive, and then you've got this large steel locator here, and you've got a small clip. This clip is going to go into the hole on your lockout tagout and just fall into the place and make sure it's there. If this is not lined up properly, you have to rotate this knob back here manually, right or left, to get it into the proper position. It's not a one-to-one -one turn here. It's a geared ratio. So it may take you like four or five turns to get it to clock to the proper position. So this is one of the things when you're first installing this on the circuit breaker, you need to check to make sure that the racking system is lined up properly and then it's going to go in all the way like it's supposed to. To install this, all you do is lift up your lockout tag out. You're going to push this in now next to it and get it to properly seat. Hold on a second. Oh, let me get my glasses on to check. Okay, I've got it fully seated, and I've now got the clip in place. So that's the first portion that you're going to be doing. Now, you have inside here, you've got the control handle box, rather. Let me pull this out here. This is the actual box. And I'll take this out. You've got your control cable to connect also. It's got the simple neural with the guided slotted plug here. Okay, let's see, yep, I'm going in the right place right there. Just be patient, push it down, screw it together. Okay, now you'll notice that you've got on here the enable and the in and out buttons. You have to hold down the enable to be able to do this the entire time. So. We're going to turn our power on. I'm going to hold down the enable when it finishes booting up here. And now we're going to be able to watch. Like, can you focus in on this part, Brian, right here? Come closer. Okay. Get this off here. Let me know when you're good. Okay. You can watch now, since the breaker's racked in, we're going to hold it down to go out. It's generating about three or four foot-pounds right now because that's over on the right side of the image. And you can see the green now all the way down at the bottom for the breaker being fully racked out. Now, in the Eaton Cutler Hammer literature, it says you should use no more than 25 foot-pounds to rack any of the Magnum DS breakers. Uh, Ten years ago, I ran an experiment for CBS ArcSafe down at our sister company, Advanced Electric and Motor Controls in Irving, Texas, where they have a large repository of the insulated case circuit breakers for Group CBS. And you can look them up through a link on our web page. If you need any parts or service for your Magnum DS breakers or SBs or MWIs, and on the 3200 amp and below small frames, it only took less than 10 foot-pounds to rack all of those in and out. 
And on the 4,000 and 5,000 double wide breakers that I did, it took less than, four, less than 15 foot pounds to rack in and rack out. So one of the things that you see with any mechanical device is you should see consistency in your racking numbers. Now we're going to rack this one in and by doing so we're going to hold down our enable button. Yes? Come a little bit closer. This better. Okay. And you'll be able to watch the color indicator change as the breaker racks in. And so you can see that the breaker is fully racked in here. We're at the connected position. If you, I, this one has the same spin back feature as the, yes, so okay, so, kept it, so if you hold this in, just watch, I'll show you the last little bit. And so it's going to actually come back and after it gets to the end of the screw here, it's going to rack it back out just a hair to remove the residual torque in the system. So while we could see the color indicator telling us that we're there, okay, it will go all the way to the end and then come back just a little bit, okay? Our next product we're going to show you is the MDS, the RSK for the MDS. Now, with this system, you're going to notice we've got two little high strength neodymium magnets and we've got an inset for the faceplate where we're going to have our buttons for the close and the trip and we're going to be able to see the indications for the springs also. Now, this system will only close and trip the breaker. It will not charge the breaker. The RSA48 that we're going to show you later on in the presentation will be able to charge, close, and trip the breaker. But first, I do have to charge it. One thing to mention about the charging operations on the Magnum DS breakers, um, the normal number that we see for I'll say 99% of the breakers is five strokes on the handle. However, comma, the Eaton literature which they have in their own uh, production facility says it may take between five and seven strokes to actually charge a Magnum DS breaker. So you may find some variance in your switchgear from the five that we see as the predominant number. So we've got our charge indication on the spring now, and now we're going to place the RSK on the front of the breaker. And just like on the other one, we have an enable button, which you will have to hold down, and the close and the trip buttons. To help you line everything up, there is an arrow or a yellow bar where the slot is for the, the pin for indexing the connection plugs, both on this side and this side. And you can't mess up because one's a male and the other one's a female. So now we have to hold down our enable button. Actually turn the power on. Now we hold down the enable button. And now we've got the breaker charged, so we're simply going to hold this down until the breaker closes. Then we release it, and if we want to trip it, and that's all there is to it. 
Then we'll turn the system off. And remove it, and I'm going to hand that off to Ben. The next thing we're going to use is our traditional RS3 uh, for the Magnum DS. This one, you can see our racking tool right down here. We have the ability also on the back side here to index it, to turn it by hand. The system works with a slide here, so if I release the button back here, this will actually um, allow the motor and everything to slide forward on the spring. And to move it back, you would simply, if it was mounted on the breaker, you would simply pull on it back here until it latches back into place. There. And normally when you're going to take it on and off the breaker, you simply will pull it back to the back position before you do that. Okay. Anytime you use any of these pieces of equipment, you always want to check to make sure that they're functioning properly before you put them on the breaker. So, our RS3, we've got our RS04 here. This uses the same CCM technology as our RS1s. With this, it is a standard, also with a radio remote, that we can use from up to 100 meters away. So if you have a substation, and I've been in some where literally you got like four feet between the concrete wall and the front of the switch gear and no other place to be, you want to be able to stand way out of the way, and this is a very good and valid option for that type of situation. When you turn on the power to this, you'll see that you're going to have battery strength meter to tell you have a minimum of 24 volts operating. You've got your connection plug here and your install and remove if you want to run this from the console in here. For the setup, we also give recommended settings, which are 3.8 and 3.5. So we can check those to see that we've got those set, 3.8 for install and 3.5. So this all looks good here. The standard cable that comes with an RSO4 is only uh, 10 feet. It's meant to stretch out to be 10 feet long. If you need a longer cable and you don't want the radio remote for some reason, we can give you a longer cable, but we need to know that ahead of time when you plan to order the system. So we can get a 10 meter or a 20 meter cable if we need to for you versus the radio remote system What you saw before on the small system for the RSK that had the small neodymium magnets, this one has the larger mag switch uh, neodymium magnets, and these can each generate around 150 kilos or 350 pounds of holding force, uh, depending upon the thickness of the steel. So now we have to lift the um, little door, and now we got to make sure we get the racking mechanism seated. And now we've got the racking mechanism seated, so we can see the tool go in. We've got that connected. Now we connect this to the motor. It's an Ampanol connector with an index, so we try to make things somewhat idiot-proof so you can't screw things up or we make it more difficult for you to. Now I'm going to switch it over to radio remote, and now we're going to use the radio remote, and I'm going to let you watch over my shoulder, and you'll watch down here what goes on. So we're going to hit the on button. You can tell we've got green light here. We've got a good 
battery indicator and we've got the CCM live. So that means that they're talking with each other along with the indicator health lights over here. The breaker's in the in position, so now we're gonna rack it out. And that's it for the process. Now, this, just like our RS1s, has dual racking protection. We do have a perfect torque clutch on the front side, and we have the current control module uh, torque limits for the torquing electrically in the motor. So now we're going to rack the breaker back in. And that completes the operation. You can uh, make a request online through info at cbsarcsafe.com. You can also call us at 1-877-472-3389. Uh, and submit your request that way. You can uh, request an on-site demonstration. We have our field reps that go throughout the United States whether you're working with our Western affiliate, Western Electrical Services, whether you're working with Circuit Breaker Sales Northeast, which is up in the Connecticut area and covers the New England area, or whether you're working with uh, CBS ArcSafe itself through the Central United and Eastern uh, United States. The demonstrations are free and there's no obligation. We'd like to give everybody a big thank you today for uh, tuning in and Ben will forward any questions that you guys have online to me. Again, info at cbsarcsafe.com or 1-877-472-3389. We'll give it another minute or two. Okay. And I would like to give one more shout out to our sister company down in Irving, AE AMC, Advanced Electric and Motor Controls. They are the ones who have provided the service for our Magnum DS, SB, and MWI breakers and they have a good quantity in stock of both those. They've got some ABB first generation Emacs, also the uh, Square D and uh, Merlin Geron Master Pack breakers if you happen to have any of those, and the Siemens WLs.